everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Miloš Saric. I'm from Serbia, but I currently live in Barcelona, Spain. I just want to say that name of the channel is Real Skills Over Degrees, but I have nothing against higher education. I think that education is extremely important for every society. I have also been to university myself. If you have an opportunity to go to university, I would advise you to do so. But to be honest, now in the world of Internet, we can all agree that we have knowledge, we have access to knowledge everywhere we go. So even if you don't have a university degree, I think that everybody can do this. What I'm going to show you here on this channel, you have me to help you. Okay, so for today, the problem is actually extremely easy. It's lead code problem 119, which is called Pascal's triangle. So what we want to do today is that we want to create a function called Pascal's triangle. And as an input, we want to give it a number of the row. The rows are indexed from a zero. And we want our function to return row of that of the Pascal's triangle. Okay, so what actually is a Pascal's triangle? Pascal's triangle is an infinite triangle which represents coefficients of the binomial expansion. And what is a binomial expansion? Well, from binomial theorem, we would get something like this. How many times we multiply a plus b by themselves? And let's see what is the value of a plus b on an n for different values of n. So for example, so when we have n is equals to 0, a plus b on a 0 is a 1. When n is equals to 1, which means that a plus b on an n is a plus b. N a plus b on a squared and n on a third. So once again, Pascal's triangle is a triangle of coefficients of the binomial expansions. So what are the coefficients? We always start the triangle with a 1. Coefficients here are also 1 and a 1. Coefficients here are 1, 2 and 1. 1, 2, 1. Coefficients here are 1, 3, 3, 1. So what can we notice about the Pascal's triangle? We can notice that it always starts with a 1. The edges are also always a 1. And one really interesting thing about Pascal's triangle is the sum of the... This element is a sum of two elements above it. This element is a sum. Every element inside is a sum of the two elements above it. So we can always recreate the triangle or the binomial expansion whenever we want without memorizing any of the formulas. So we know that this is a 4, this is a 6, this is a 4, this is a 1. We also know that 1, 5, 10, 10, 5. Pascal's triangle has a lot of interesting properties. So the sum of all elements inside the road is actually always 2 on an n. So this is actually 2 on a 0. This is 2 on a 1, which is sum 1 plus 1 is 2. Here, this is 2 on a 2, 4. This is 8, which is 2 on a 3, 2 on a 4, etc. One also really interesting property is that if we look this as a rows as a number, each row is actually 11 on an n. So this is 11 on a 0. This is 11 on a 1. As you can see, this is 11. This is 11 on a 2, 121, and so on. So Pascal's triangle really has a lot of interesting properties. Okay, so let's try and solve our Pascal's triangle problem in Python. And how can we do something like that? Uh, I also want to say that please don't try to memorize these solutions. Think about the solution, understand the solution. It will benefit you a lot when you try to solve different problems in Python. But let's solve this one. 
Once again, that the Pascal's triangle always starts with a 1. Edges in Pascal's triangle are also always a 1. And the elements inside our Pascal's triangle are some of the two elements above it. So this will be a 4, this will be a 6, this will be a 4, this will be a 1. And how can we program an infinite triangle in Python? Well, first we will create a list. We will name that list Pascal's triangle. And inside that list, we will have elements which are also other lists. So the reason for that is that inside this Pascal triangle list, we will represent every row with another list whose elements are elements of the row, which input will be the number of the row we want to return. So let's write down our function. Okay, so we have created our function and the input argument is the index of the row. Now, always for the function and for the for loop, we are indented next line of code. So the Python knows that those line of code belong to that function or that for loop. Now we will create our Pascal's triangle matrix. Here in this step, to the Pascal's triangle variable, we have assigned a list and that list has one element already, which is another list, which contains an int, which is a one, which basically means that we already know that the first element of our Pascal's triangle is a one, so we can already initialize it. Now we will create our for loop, which will generate all other rows. Let's do that. So I have ro wrote a for loop and a range, which means range always include the first element, which is a one which basically means that since we already initialized the, the zero index row, we don't have to write a for loop. We start from the second row or the first indexed row, which is a one. Also, here I have added, here I have added a one. Basically, range excludes the last character. And since we want to create the row index and return exactly that, we need to create also that row. That is why we add a one. Again, we want our characters to be inside the for loop. So we have the indentation. Now what we want to do is we want to create another list, which we will add lists for every row, which will contain elements of each row, which we will add to our Pascal's triangle matrix. So let's do that. It has a one since we already know that every first, first element is a one. Now, in order to get those elements, we will write a second for loop, which is called a nested for loop, which will start from the index one and go to the second last element of our row. So let's do that. This row is the value from the first function which we iterate. So it starts from a one, then it becomes two. So in the, in the first row, we have one, two row, one, one, which means that the for loop won't be executed at all. So we will generate the first row with a one and we will add a one later. Then we come to the second index row. We start from a one. We start from the index one. We generate the two and we terminate the for loop because 
the for loop excludes the last element. And how will we generate elements inside the row? As I already said, the key is that each element is the sum of two elements above it. So we will access our Pascal triangle rho minus one, and we know that we need elements which are indexed minus one and same index as the element we want to get. So let's write it down. This is a little bit long, but I will post, my handwriting is also terrible, but I will post the entire solution at the end. I hope you manage to follow. So, what we have done here, we access Pascal's triangle row minus one and the element which is indexed minus one and also index the same and we do the for loop until we generate all elements and we append it inside our row list list. And at the end, and at the end we add a one since again, we know that every element, every edge is a one. So we add, we add, we finish our first for loop we add a row list to our Pascal's triangle matrix. And finally, in order to solve our problem that we got, we need to return our function. We just need to return the, the row, not the element. So we access the Pascal's triangle row. Guys, thank you so much if you stayed until the end. I really hope that you liked the video. I really hope also that you find it helpful and see you next week with a new problem and new topic.